fast with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. find the greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. the rounds of the Cactus City Business District, Smiley Phillips, a reporter for the Daily Star, turned in at a door bearing a sign which read, Cassius Holt, Attorney at Law. The fixed smile which had given the newspaper man his name widened as Holt, a small dour-faced man, waved him into a chair beside the roll-top desk. Sit down, Smiley. I was about to send for you. Well, I suppose you want a story kept out of the paper, no? I have some surprising news for you. Of course, I shouldn't tell it. To do so makes me guilty of a breach of professional ethics. <laughs> You've been guilty of a lot of things. You weren't disbarred from the practice of law in the East for nothing. And you weren't fired from a New York paper for nothing except blackmail. <laughs> yeah, we've been over that before. Now, spill your secret. Last night, I drew a will for your boss, Colonel Mitchell. Well, he has no relatives, so where will his property go? To you? Me? Oh, Cash, this is great. The star alone is worth a lot of money, but... Oh, wait. The colonel has had to live for another 20 or 30 years in spite of the fact he was shot through the chest during the Civil War. Hasn't it occurred to you that his life could be, uh, shortened? Yes, but as his heir, I'd be suspected of murdering him. Sheriff Hubbard would jail me quicker than you can say habeas corpus. Smiley, I've done a lot of thinking about that, Will. It presents opportunities for both of us. How do you figure it out? My safe is filled with blackmailing material. Nearly every rich rancher and mining man around here has a skeleton in his closet. The cattle kings got their start as rustlers. The mine operators were claim jumpers and some were killers. <laughs> Still watch it. Once the Daily Star is yours, we can use it to blackmail them out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. We couldn't get away with that or anything else as long as Newt Hubbard is sheriff. I thought up a scheme that will eliminate him and Colonel Mitchell at the same time. By working things right, we can put the sheriff in a position where he'll have to shoot the colonel. Some weeks later, the Lone Ranger and Toto were camped in the mountains, a day's ride from Cactus City. Looking up from a copy of the Daily Star, which Toto had obtained at a nearby stage station, 
The masked man remarked, Otto, our old friend Sheriff Hubbard is in trouble. Oh, what happened? This newspaper is viciously attacking him. The editor, Colonel Mitchell, accuses him of being cowardly, incompetent, and crooked. Oh, editor, wrong. I'd stake my life on that. Personal journalism in the West has reached a point where even the best men are slandered. It's a menace to good government. All right, let's break camp. Uh, and where we go? Cactus City. We help Sheriff Hubbard once, perhaps we can help him again. As the Lone Ranger and Toto prepared for the trip, Smiley Phillips squeezed into Sheriff Hubbard's office. Hi, Sheriff. The lawman greeted him affably. Howdy, Smiley. Take your weight off your feet. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. You know, I can't understand why you allow a reporter for the Star to come into your office. Uh, Shook, Smiley, I'm an understanding sword. I don't blame you for what Colonel Mitchell writes about me. I know your job is just getting news about shootings and such. I, I hate to tell you this, but in today's paper, the Colonel will have an editorial claiming that you stuffed the ballot boxes in order to get elected. <laughs> why? Oh, I won't go in for name calling. Sheriff has to expect abuse. But I don't say the where the colonel is blackguarding me. Well, just between us, I wouldn't stand for the kind of slander the colonel is printing about you. I'd shoot him on sight. So would every other man in the territory. Maybe so. But I don't break any laws in spite of what he says. I do my darndest to enforce him. <laughs> you must be thick-skinned, Sheriff. Well, see you again. A few minutes later, Smiley was in conference with Colonel Mitchell, an ex-army officer of reckless courage but poor judgment, who had put aside the sword for the pen. He had not, however, discarded his six-shooter. It was a cap and ball Colt, a dragoon model of 1861, and it lay on his desk within easy reach as he asked... Smiley, did you see that uh, poltroon who wears a sheriff's badge? I just came from him, Colonel. Of course, you realize that I have to keep on friendly terms with him in order to get more evidence of his unfitness for office. Yes, you've convinced me of that. It remains for me to convince the public that a lily-livered scoundrel must be driven out of Cactus City. He feels the same way about you, I gathered. Hmm. He claimed that you've been sneaking down alleys to avoid meeting him. What? No man can speak like that of me and live. I'll publicly challenge him to a duel. A duel? In tomorrow's paper, I shall print a statement saying that at 12 noon that day and each day following, I propose to walk down the middle of Main Street in the hope of meeting and shooting that power through. While Colonel Mitchell raked the English language for the high-flown phrases popular in that day, Smiley hurried to Cassius Holt's law office. Bursting in upon his fellow plotter, he exclaimed, Cash, it worked out just as you planned. I told you it would. The colonel is going to force the sheriff's hand by challenging him to a duel on Main Street. Excellent. Will the colonel be armed with his cap and ball revolver as I anticipated? Yep. Well, naturally. Now, but look here. That gun is reliable and accurate. I've seen him use it to shoot the flame from a candle at 50 feet. You know, there's a good chance that he'll kill the sheriff instead of getting killed. I thought of that. I want you to spike his gun. Spike it? Oh. He doesn't carry it in the holster. So you ought to be able to get hold of it before he leaves the star office. Oh, I can do that. Then what? Drive cactus spines into the six nipples on which the percussion caps fit. That will keep the caps from touching off the powder charges in the cylinder chambers. And make him a perfect setup for the sheriff. Cash, you think of everything. Indeed I do, Smiley. Right now, I'm thinking of a way to keep you from double-crossing me. Why, I wouldn't do that. I don't trust you. You smile too much. On the following morning, the star carried the colonel's challenge under a banner headline. Sheriff Hubbard and his chief deputy, Bill Lyons, fretted together at the jail... The deputy was saying, Sheriff, you have to meet him or quit your job. Well, meet the colonel. But I won't try to do it. I'll arrest him. It 
slack but a few minutes of being noon when the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode up to the crest of a high hill overlooking Cactus City. There they drew rain. <laughs> Unaware that Colonel Mitchell's editorial attacks on the sheriff had reached a climax that threatened gunplay, they gazed down on the town. Tonto pointed. Place looked plenty quiet. Yeah, it's too quiet. There isn't a man on the sidewalks or a horse at the hitch racks. He must have me see people. But them all look out of doors, windows, round corners of buildings. They seem to be expecting trouble. Ah. And what we do? I want to keep my presence a secret, at least until I've talked with the sheriff. So we'll go on to the edge of town. I'll wait there while you find out what's going on. And they savvy. Come up, stop. At that moment, Colonel Mitchell entered his office and found Smiley waiting beside the editorial desk. Picking up his gun, he looked at the shiny new priming caps. The smiling reporter's expression did not change as he asked, Colonel, are you sure your gun's in order? Yes, it couldn't be otherwise. Just before I went to the cafe, I oiled it, recharged it, and put on new priming caps. Well, it's almost 12. Give me your hand, my boy. I uh, have a secret. No, no, I won't tell it now. But if it should happen that I don't return, I want you to remain true to the tradition of fearless journalism. Be a scourge of evildoers. Now, goodbye. Goodbye, Colonel. Believe me, my heart and soul are in your gun today. My heart and soul and six cactus needles. Meanwhile, the sheriff had stationed himself in the center of the street a block away. He stood with his legs wide apart, his hands hanging loosely at his sides. His one gun was holstered. Seeing the colonel emerge from the star building... He called to his chief deputy, who had posted himself on the walk nearby. Stay out of this field. It's my job. Right, but don't give him more than an even break. From places of safety, hundreds of townspeople watched with bated breaths. The deathly silence was broken only by the sound of the colonel's footsteps. He advanced on the sheriff with a measured tread of a soldier, holding himself proudly erect. His gun hung barrel down from his right hand. As the distance between the two men shrank to 20 paces, the colonel paused and called... Look, yours. You're under arrest. Oh, what? Disturbing the peace. You can't hide behind your badge, you craven reprobate. When I reach the stone in front of you, I shall fire. As the colonel continued his fateful march, the sheriff slipped his gun from its holster, but did not raise it. Again, the challenger stopped. Up with your gun. I'm firing. As he spoke, the colonel aimed and triggered his long-barreled army colt. The hammer fell. Only the percussion cap exploded. The colonel's face was red with fury as he growled. Miss fire! Don't try that again. Uh, give me your gun. No. Oh. I'm sorry, Colonel. You had two chances. All right, get him. You're not badly hurt. But... Not... Not I'm coming, Sheriff. I'm waiting. The rest of you people stand back. As the sheriff kept the crowd back, Doc Harlow knelt beside the fallen man. Taking off his tall hat, he uncoiled the stethoscope which he always carried in it. After applying the instrument to the colonel's breast for a short time, he pronounced, This man is dead. Why, Doc, that can't be. I aimed at the colonel's shoulder. You've made a mistake. He's alive. Well, if he's alive, so is Julius Caesar. Here, some of you fellas. Put him on a shutter and carry him to my office. I'll take the colonel's gun. I want yours too, Sheriff. Megan, what for? I'm the coroner, remember? All right. Dig it. Being coroner, it's my legal right and duty to hold you for the inquest. Sheriff, you're under arrest. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. It was a little later when Toto, who had witnessed the death of Colonel Mitchell and the rest of the sheriff, rejoined the Lone Ranger and told what had happened. Meanwhile, the ever-smiling reporter had gone to Cash Holt's law office to discuss the next steps in their plot. He was saying, The coroner has the colonel's gun. Even if he finds that it was Spike, the sheriff will get the blame. I agree. And now let's get that will probated. No. You don't want to draw public attention to yourself yet. Well, I've got to keep the paper going. As the most capable man on the staff, you'll be expected to do that. Pending administration of the estate. Then I'll take charge and get out a special edition. Uh, by the way, Smiley, you're in a position now where you need a gun handy. You know, I've always thought it's smarter to pack a grin than a gun. It's more disarming. You can't work a blackmail scheme in the West without more protection than that. I always keep a forty-five on my desk. <laughs> so I've noted. Now, here's a forty-one caliber double-barreled Derringer pistol that you can carry in your pocket at all times. I'm making you a present of it. Thanks. First gun I ever had. Now, be careful. It's loaded. Never look down the barrel of a gun. You may shoot yourself. <laughs> Aren't you afraid I'll use it on you? You said you didn't trust me. I still don't. But I advise you not to try any gunplay. I'm a man who knows how to protect himself. That night, the sheriff and his chief deputy, in whose custody he had been placed, sat at a table in the jail office. The coroner had just arrived. As he took off his tall hat and mopped his forehead, he said... Sheriff, I thought I could clear you at the inquest tomorrow. But now I don't know. I found that your bullet only hit the colonel's shoulder. Well, then what in blazes killed him? The shot. An old Civil War wound had weakened his heart. Well, that makes me feel some better. Uh, don't help you in any other way. People are saying you took advantage of a Civil War hero who had only a ball and cap gun. They call it murder. I say it... Look there. Masked man and angel. Keep your head off your gun, Bill. They're friends of mine. You're out of your trouble, Sheriff. How can we help? Mister, I'm sure glad to see you and Tonto. I never needed you more. But it don't look like there's a thing you can do for me. Tonto saw the shooting. He says you let Colonel Mitchell snap his gun at you before you fired. I did. But I couldn't take another chance with his gun not firing. I reckon he had some old priming caps on it. It isn't like an ex-officer to put old caps on a gun he expected to use in a duel. Oh, uh, where is the gun? Right here on the table. We're holding it for the inquest. May I see it? Go ahead. Here you are. This gun's in excellent condition. The copper caps are as bright as any that just came out of a box. What are you, what are you doing? Shutting the cylinder and taking off the caps. Hmm. Every nipple has been plugged. <laughs> apparently with cactus spines. Hey, no wonder it wouldn't shoot. Sheriff, both you and the colonel have been victims of a cunning plot. Somebody wanted him killed. And arranged it so that you had to do the shooting. The masked man is right. But it won't help your case, Sheriff. In fact, it'll make it worse if I let the inquest jury see that gun. They'll figure you managed somehow to spike it. Does the colonel have any enemies? Well, I know about. I didn't even hit him. Well, uh, who stands to gain by his death? Nobody. He didn't have any ears. He must have it. We'll step into the back room. Smiley. Doc, Sheriff, I'll be going outside the cell. You better lock up that killer and keep him locked up or I'll use my paper to run you out of town. Your paper, did you say? Yes, I said it. You might as well know now as later that the colonel willed me all his property. I don't believe it. I heard him say once that he figured to leave everything to an old soldier's home. Well, that was before I went to work for him. Where is that will you're talking about? Cash Holt has it in his law office. Why, that shyster. He probably forged it for you. I... As the argument continued, the Lone Ranger touched Tonto's arm, and the two men moved silently through a door to an alley where they had left their horses. There, the masked man said, Talk won't solve the sheriff's problem. He can't work on it. And the coroner isn't a real lawman. We'll have to act. Um, what we do? That reporter had a chance to spike the gun. The will gave him a reason to do it. We're going after the will. Maybe that gets us in plenty of trouble. We'll take that chance for the sheriff's sake. Do you know where Lawyer Holt has his office, Toto? Uh, let me show you. This way. Go ahead. A 
few minutes later, the greedy little lawyer was roused from a dream of power and plunder by a knock on his door. Expecting a visit from Smiley, he unlocked and opened it. Then he backed over to his desk with a gasp. A masked man. Steady, old. We're here on business. Not you and that Indian. You were hired to kill me, and I know who hired you. Why, he'll hang for it. I fix it so he will. We won't harm you. All we want you to do is show us Colonel Mitchell's will. Of course you want the will for that double-crosser. What double-crosser? You know as well as I do. As he spoke, the lawyer slid one of his hands into the litter of papers on his desk. Then it snaked out with a gun that had lain concealed there. Uh, Leaping upon him, Colonel forced the gun upward just uh, as the hammer fell. Plaster showered down on the struggling men. Holt was shrieking. Uh, 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 for me, break your arm. Don't no, no twist it anymore. I'll be quiet. I'll take his gun, Toto. Let go of it. Uh, uh, let go. Uh, you scam still, fella. Holt, oh, when we came here, we would have been satisfied with learning who witnessed that will. But your affair of being murdered by an accomplice to expose you as being a crook yourself. Were you and Smiley Phillips behind the gun plot that cost the colonel his life? I'm through talking. Otto, those yells and that shot must have been heard. We'll have to work fast. Search him for the key to his safe. Oh, no time, sir. You'll pay for this. Uh, uh, him got something on string round neck. Little bag with paper in it. A key in paper. Good. Give me the key. Uh, you take it. Me look at paper. Put that back, you redskin. Put it back. Where? We ain't got a paper crash. Swallow it. Get it back. That's that important to him. I want to see it. Uh, you take it. And me keep him quiet. I'll read it after I try that key on the safe. The whole town will be here after you are close in a minute. Where did you get out while you can? Keep it, Timosavi. Yes, I'm getting the safe unlocked. There. As the Lone Ranger searched the strong box, a citizen who had heard the shot and peered through a window spread word through the town that a holdup was in progress in Cash Holt's office. Armed men began to gather outside. Hearing the hubbub, the masked man abandoned his examination of the lawyer's files and got to his feet. Hello, we're trapped. And sound that way. And what you find? The will, which seems to have been duly witnessed and notarized, and actually bequeathed the property to Smiley Phillips. Also, a lot of stuff which could be used for blackmail. Um, that not help us or sheriff. I'm afraid not. I'll take a look at the paper a whole tried to swallow. Help! Help! Smiley for the sneaking killer's yard. Oh, 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 Smiley's on his left, 
from the Derringer in his hand, the reporter rushed toward the crowded doorway. As the crowd fell back with exclamations of fear, the Lone Ranger, who had been standing with hands up, leaped to block his escape. One of the masked man's hands dropped to a gun butt. Stop that! The reporter whirled just as the Lone Ranger's gun cleared leather. The twin barrels of Smiley's pistol were within inches of the masked man's heart when the hammer fell. A body hit the floor, but it was not the Lone Ranger who fell. Smiley was on the floor, feebly repeating... I'll look after him. You missed me. What happened? His pistol backfired. Apparently driving the lock and breech into his own chassis. No bullets came out of the barrels or I would have been killed. I do say me that. Here are the barrels I just found on the floor. They're both plugged with oversized bullets, which were driven in from the muzzle end. No wonder the gun blew apart. Oh, listen to what Smiley's saying. Holt gave me a gun. Wanted to be killed. Double... Cross. Well, we've got another body for the inquest. Oh, oh, oh. He must be. Look, lawyer, fellow, take time. Hey, reckon that poor kid will have to be carried to the gallows in a chair. He's plum yellow, but he knew all the gun tricks. Why do you suppose he gave Smiley a plug gun? He probably expected the reporters to turn the gun on him sooner or later. He figured out a perfect plan for committing murder protecting himself against his confederate. But he outsmarted himself. You're as good as clear right now. The inquest won't be anything but a formality. Vice man, I owe you another big debt now. I wish there was something I could do to repay. There is, Sheriff. Just keep on being the kind of lawman who is making the West a better place in which to live. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. Well, Sheriff, who is that man? man? <laughs> Well, as I mind, I asked that same question once of another lawman. He told me like I'm telling you. He's the Lone Ranger. Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker.